so thanks uh, organizers and sir for the opportunity so well in uh, coming uh, uh, 10 minutes i will be answering two important questions one is uh, can diet and exercise help during cancer treatment it is not prevention or post treatment during active cancer treatment does diet and exercise help second uh, study is is active counseling and psychotherapy essential for all patients is what these two questions we will answer in the coming 10 minutes so <clears throat> the first is a randomized study to say whether diet and exercise benefits breast cancer outcomes during active treatment so what is the background so the moment a patient a person is diagnosed with cancer definitely there is a compromise in diet and there is a reduced physical activity when this happens the inflammatory cytokines cause sarcopenia because of cancer itself and probably this results in poor tolerance to chemotherapy and compromised uh, uh, relative dose intensity of chemotherapy and reduced pathological response this is the postulation hence there is a need for optimizing diet and exercise in these patients so this is how the study design is stage 1 2 3 intact organ functions good performance status they should be fit to tolerate vigorous exercise and they should not be enrolled in any voluntary weight loss program so this is the inclusion criteria small study 173 odd patients 86 with usual care and 87 with optimized exercise and nutrition and the primary endpoint is the tolerance to chemotherapy that is relative dose intensity is the objective way of understanding and the secondary endpoint is pathological complete response they have also specifically defined what exercise means moderate to rigorous physical activities for at least 20 minutes per day and what is uh, what is adequate nutrition optimal nutrition more than 5 fruits or vegetables per day more than 25 grams of fiber less than 30 grams of sugar and less than 70 grams of red meat and less than one drink of alcohol a day so this is the definition of optimal nutrition by the investigators so just to uh, say what is rdi relative dose intensity is what is the percentage of ideal dose i could give and it includes both dose and duration the frequency and the total duration taken to complete usually we accept that an rdi of more than 85% is sufficient to get good results so well if you look into the results yes majority were around the median age was 53 years bmi was on the higher side 29 and 50% of them were stage 1 and around 42% received neoadjuvant chemo and these are the usual chemotherapy regimens that we use were also used in this study uh, a dose dense regimen a dose dense taxane cyclo and so on so what is the result this is important <clears throat> doing exercise and nutrition did not make them tolerate chemotherapy well if you look into the relative dose intensity of chemo it is equal in both the arms whether you do exercise whether you eat well or not i tolerate chemotherapy equally well but what is staggering is the pathological complete responses better so with the same chemotherapy i am having better <coughs> results again what we reflected from the previous uh, dr sushmita was speaking on how exercise implicate reduce the risk and here exercise itself is causing a higher pathological complete response so arthur concludes Uh, that exercise nutrition no effect on rdi but double pcr hence exercise nutrition can be adapted so these are the pros and cons of study it's a randomized study specific it defines well ex- diet and exercise relevant endpoints pcr is doubled economical applicable and the cons are primary endpoint is negative but the secondary endpoint is positive so that they, they, they are the probable pros and cons and my take home message is diet and nutrition doubles pcr if you look into pembrolizumab it increases pcr by 1.2 times only but but diet and P, uh, nutrition is doubling the pcr and if you had efs as an endpoint you know that would have been a better endpoint it is cost and doable so we should recommend optimum diet and physical exercise for all our patients during active treatment similar study next one uh, next one is whether psychological counseling is required in our patients or not you know <clears throat> so this is a randomized trial of psychological uh, a psychiatrist counseling versus a, just a group discussion again to address the question so what is the background life of a cancer patient begins after the cancer treatment ends what happens there is a fear of recurrence and number two there is stigma in the society you know nobody treats a cancer patient equal so because of these two uh, mentally these patients undergo and the psychological interventions definitely improve fatigue anxiety depression quality of life but let's see which is better so this is a compare and contrast of a 
psychotherapy versus a non-specific group discussion. Psychotherapy is one to one, you know. I ask the patient, what are your problems? You write down. Okay, I'm concerned about my husband not treating me well. I'm concerned about the society. So whatever thoughts are there, we will ask them to write and we will try to tell them that they're irrational and this is what is called as cognitive brain therapy. What is non-specific group discussion? Just make cancer patients sit in a room, speak them, uh, ask them to speak uh, open-heartedly, uh, telling what I feel, what you feel. So this is the sort of study they did. So short structured, uh, sh uh, structured short-term psychotherapy versus non-specific group discussion. So this is how uh, th they had completed intensive phase treatment. The NCCN distress thermometer with at least five points. I think five points, a majority of us in the room will have five points NCCN. And then exercise and nutrition as per routine care. And randomization is one is to one, you know, psychotherapy group discussion. And primary endpoint is reduction in anxiety levels. Secondary endpoints were depression, distress, fatigue, quality of life. So what does psychotherapy? Three sessions they did for anxiety, fatigue, motivation, and one week apart. And group discussion was again three sessions. And they gave questionnaires at the beginning, at the end, and after three months of uh, uh, completing this particular protocol. And they noted improvements in endpoints. So what did it say? There is no difference in any of the endpoints, whether you spoke in a group or whether it was specifically counseled by a psychologist. However, only in those who had high anxiety levels, psychotherapy looked like in that subgroup uh, did better than group discussion. So what did the authors conclude? No difference between psychotherapy and group discussion. High distress subgroup to be identified early and offered psychotherapy. So these are my conclusions. So life of a cancer patient begins after the treatment ends. Post-treatment distress is under-recognized. So I, I keep seeing patients coming, I mean, texting me again and again after the complete treatment. I don't understand. You're taking tamoxifen, let so why are you why you're texting me? Then this is the reason, you know, they undergo a turmoil in the mind. You know, we must offer psychological interventions for all of our patients uh, with an NCCN more than five distress. Not everyone needs a psychiatrist or psychologist. A simple group discussion among patients reduce distress and improve quality of life. So what we should do, develop cancer support groups in your hospital and ask your patients to meet repeatedly on a periodically and new patients, old patients, everyone can talk between themselves and this itself reduces. So identify those with high, high distress and only they will go to psychiatrist. Not everyone needs psychi psychiatrist consultation. So this is uh, our Bengal cancer support group. We have formed in our own hospital. This is a patient-led group and patient-led meeting uh, every month, uh, 7th of 7 p.m. We religiously follow this, and this has been happening for the last one and a half years. Thanks, everyone. Thank